came for Parents Weekend, and I saw his father who <laughs> said, said to me, he's, okay, he's like 20 now, right? Maybe 21 even. And because uh, he's failed out of college and, you know, things have been kind of, he said, you know, if he could just learn to hand, with his handwriting, if he could just read his own handwriting, all of this would disappear, you know, ADHD and so on. I don't think so. But anyway, um, so he said, can't you teach him to write clearly? And I said, no. Time, time is up for that, you know, and we, we don't teach handwriting in college, though maybe we should, but um, in any event, uh, you know, he, uh, he actually, keyboarding is, you know, there's a big emphasis on keyboarding, and I think that's really great, but I've come to be more of a believer in letter formation, especially as it um, relates to developing print awareness and things. And again, letters combine to form words. You have to tell the difference between dry graphs, blends. You have to be able to recognize when syllables, multi-syllables come, where to divide them, and the fact that there are uh, base words and suffixes, which is part of the morpheme part of language, and that there are different syllable types because how any vowel is pronounced is going to depend completely on what the letters are around it. This is a lot. I mean, this is just, this is just, you know, so this is word study, part of word study, but it isn't the whole thing. It's because we have to also work on the meaning of those words. We have to teach vocabulary uh, directly as well as give students a lot of uh, exposure to print and to different vocabulary because how, what's the best way to develop vocabulary? Reading, reading, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, of course, there is the uh, multiple meaning part of our language or polysemy. It's such a great word. You know, sometimes I just like to hear myself say it, to listen to me. Yeah. Um, so, uh, this, let's, let's just try a quick experiment. Um, and, all right. Remember, you have Judy. Okay, Judy, um, think about, close your eyes, and tell me what comes to mind when I say, this word, okay? B. Okay, so you're seeing a bumblebee. Did anybody have something different come to mind? Everybody thought of the bumblebee? Yes. Yeah. The letter B. The letter B. <laughs> yeah, the letter B. Anything else? A oh boy. Okay. That's the first letter, uh -huh. association. And then also, there's the verb, B, you know. So we could do this with P. I saw Marianne will do it with P, but it leads us down kind of a path where we may not really want to go. But um, in any case, but yeah, so we have letter names and we have words and, you know. In fact, I was working with a student yesterday who, um, and we're working in an early stage. She's, she's has a real severe, um, real severe uh, dyslexia. So we're working with, uh, we're just doing um, early, early three sound words and the, and the bonus letter rule, which is when you double L. It's another ridiculous thing about English. Um, where you double L, S, and F, you know, when it comes to the end of a word, a short word, but only a short word, and Z sometimes. So we're doing this, and she reads it, and so I say to her, uh, because I find that I'm integrating more and more in my uh, work with, with students, you know, this multiple meaning and vocabulary thing, because it's so important. So what, you know, can you tell me the meaning of Bill? What are all the, you know? And she said, well, it could be somebody's name. Good, and then she said, and it could be that thing before 
that you have before it becomes a law, and I was like bowled over. I couldn't believe it. But it turned out they'd been watching Schoolhouse Rock, yeah. you know, and how a bill, you know, I'm just a bill. Um, <laughs> and I hadn't even thought of that. And then we talked about, you know, you send a bill to somebody and the duck has a bill and so on. But um, it's a lot of fun to do that. Uh, and I think leads to good things. The thing is, if they, if a student is a, or if a person is a, ha, has a very slow processing speed, uh, processes print very slowly, they don't have time to necessarily notice all this. And so it really sets them back as far as uh, developing reading to its fullest. Um, and we, we have to develop semantic knowledge in our students, too, because um, we need to be able to really quickly retrieve various meanings from our memory uh, in order to understand the way the word's being used, like Bill. I mean, it was, could mean any of those things. It's going to depend on the context, and that's going to go by really quickly. So the more we know about a word, in all its glory, you know, the better we can understand it. So you'll probably notice, those of you who are teachers, that your, your students have a much harder time, even if decoding words they're not familiar with, even though they might be real words, than words they are familiar with. Because they, we come at readings with lots of, you know, from lots of different uh, directions and so we may be unfamiliar with the letter combinations, but if we don't have any idea what the, if it just seems like a nonsense word, it's, it's going to stop you, you know, it's going to stop them in their tracks, sort of. Um, then, of course, there's syntax, the grammatical relationships within language. Word order matters. The cat bit the mouse is really different than the mouse bit the cat. And, uh, and so that's another piece of this. So <clears throat> is anyone getting overwhelmed? No. Good. Because when I think about all the things that we have to do to be able to, uh, to be able to, to facilitate, you know, reading and, and to the point of skilled reading, it kind of boggles my mind, really. Gives me new respect for uh, all, all the, you know, that anyone reads at all, actually. It's amazing. Um, then there's the morphemic part of our language, morphemes. Morpheme is just basically a term for like a root word or a base word. And um, English, that's what screws up English even more is that it's not just a phonetic language, it's a we have this morpheme thing. So here we have, you know, we have suffixes, we have suffixes and prefixes, we have suffixes that change the tense of the word, we have suffixes that require spelling, you know, the base word to change in order to add them, and all of that, um, all of that a reader has to be able to recognize really fast. So the more you know about words, the faster you're going to be able to read and understand it. So, you know, here, uh, one of the things that I really like about the Wilson reading system is that it has uh, very explicitly teaches the, uh, addresses the morphemic nature of, of, of English with all these suffixes and they're color coded so that um, right from the very beginning, in the earliest phases of, of teaching reading, we're introducing the concept of the base word and the suffix and how it changes the meaning of the word slightly. It's also what uh, happens with spelling. Like, why in the world should we have a C in muscle? You know, why, why, would, why do we need that C there? Well, it comes from a root that, you know, 
that muscular musculature and so on. So it's the in order to preserve the meaning here, we have to keep the C there. And that's no, that's <laughs> another really another really challenging thing about English spelling, but I think it's the other piece of this is it's so important to teach spelling along with reading so you can address these kinds of, of uh, features. And I have students who ask me all the time,